version of Photoshop. So this is a Kingslayer.com. I'm Elijah here. I'm interviewing the fine folks over at the studio of Radical Entertainment. Radical Entertainment and on a new title, Prototype 2. And here's a designer. The game is here at Comic Con NYC 2011, and it's gotten a lot of rave reviews from fans. And now we're here to talk with one of the designers. How did the game start about in terms of creating a sequel from the first title, which many people came from nowhere and it got a lot of critical acclaim both from the press and from um, fans. Yeah, oh yeah, which was just fantastic. I mean, yeah. we sold over two million units of wow. Prototype 1, right? During a time when the economy was starting to tank as well. Yeah. You know, and the real allure of that game was the fact that it was really that over-the-top, you know, third-person action game, action-adventure game. And what I like to think in the Prototype 2 now is that we've cracked that even further, right? I like to think of it now as the over-the-top of the world yeah. action game. And the example I like to give is, you know, how many games do you know where you can pick up a vehicle run to the top of a skyscraper with it. There might be two helicopters up there. You throw the vehicle and nail one of the copters, bringing it down. You jump yeah. on the other copter, rip off the weapon system. As you're falling, you're nailing it with the weapon system, bringing it down. You drop the system, you look down, target a tank, take it out with an elbow drop. And that was, there was a certain rhythm to the game in when you, being able to do that. You never felt like you were constricted or you were stuck in an animation going into that. It, everything was always seamless. Did you try to carry that and prove it, bringing it up over to the sequel? Oh, absolutely. I, mean, we've got, I think we've got even beyond that now okay. because, you know, certainly in some of the sequences there were times, for example, you could get hit by rockets from the yeah. back or from the side. And now what's happening, because it can still be multiple enemies or several things, one is the enemy tells have been improved. Yeah. So if you're going to get hit with a heavy weapon, you'll see a laser come in from the direction. Nice. You'll hear an audio cue as well. And it gives you the chance to either block, right, tactically dodge, or when you actually uh, have a strong enough shield when you advance it, you can deflect rockets right back at the wow. enemy, right? And it allows you to kind of pick and choose what you want to do, but at least you're now in control. Also, what you'll find is that we can now combo between two powers at once. Okay. So you're not trying to, you know, bring up your power wheel, switch your power wow. to uh, something else. You can now equip, for example, claws to tear through flesh, and they're fast, and a hammer fist, which is slower but really deadly for going after vehicles or large area of attacks. Wow. So obviously, with that much stuff going on, how was it integral to get the engine to a place where the artist can actually realize that type of vision in terms of gameplay and that richness and depth? Oh, I mean, that is really critical because, okay. of course, you know, having been more involved in technology, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a techie guy, so I know the importance of having good, strong tech, but really, unless it supports the artist, you're not going anywhere. Yeah. And they're the ones who are creating the beautiful art, beautiful world, the beautiful animation and models, right? And they need tools that allow them to be able to do it and iterate very quickly. So, luckily, we're a studio that's been around for 20 yeah. years this year. 20 fact, years this, is this month, year? Month. Actually, last so that's month, a lot of that's a lot of a lot of scars, a lot of a lot of growing pains as well. You bet. I mean, you know, we have got to a point now where I think our process is very strong. Yeah. Our people are very talented. You know, we, we've been we're veterans now in the world doing this kind of stuff. We've done a few open world games. And you, and know. to survive in this industry for that long, it's great. And I want to talk about that. What made you, especially with a character like this, who is African American, you don't see that many um, focused characters like that in the gaming world. What made you guys say, okay, we're going to take a chance with this new particular character and we're going to tell a story in a different way? What was the impetus about that? So, you know, for us, it's certainly not taking a chance in any which way, shape, or form <laughs> because what we did is we set out basically a set of, of guidelines we wanted our character to fulfill. We okay. wanted the character to be strong, right? And we don't mean like big, bulky strong. We mean, you know, an inner strength and an outer strength. We wanted someone who was military as well. But we also wanted someone who had the pain of losing their family. Okay. And if you look up at Heller's face, even right now on those posters, yeah. you know, you see a strong guy, you see a guy who clears yeah. military train, so you see the pain in his eyes, you see the humanity. And we went through concept over concept. We had male, female, you know, every race. We went through everything. We kept it wide open. But every time Heller's image kept coming up, yeah. we kept saying, and I love that fact of it because even when I saw the initial posters and initial um, art assets that were going out, it felt it felt like you put thought into it. It didn't feel tacked on. Now, how does that relate to the gameplay? That you found this character after this search, did it make the game come more alive compared to the, the first title? 
Yeah, you know, certainly when you have a character you can really relate to. Yeah. You know, I mean, I'll face it, I'm Italian, right? Yeah. If someone goes after my family and kills them, I'm sorry, but, you know, I'm probably going to be a little vengeful. It's just me. <laughs> it's but, true. You know, you know, it's something to relate to. It's, it's a good idea. What I like yeah. about it is kind of, you know, the irony of the fact that you've got Heller, who's so bent on going after Mercer because he's the one who released the virus and it destroyed yeah. his family. Yeah. And yet Mercer, with his own plans, which we haven't revealed yet, infects Heller and makes yeah. him the next prototype, yeah. essentially giving them the capability and the tools to take him out, to take Mercer out, wow. right? So, is, is Mercer at all playable in the game? He, he's not. We focused on a single player campaign. Okay. Uh, just with Heller. Yeah. That's you know, really the most important part of it. So Mercer how does he drive the story as a mechanism as, the, as, this, as this villain, but not a villain? Because Mercer, I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed his journey as well. Yeah. Uh, did I say he was a villain? <laughs> no. Okay. No, all right. No, all right. I, I, the assumption let, is good. Let's face it that, you know, the prototype prototype showdown has to yeah. happen. Yeah. You know, the reasons why, you know, how the truth comes out, everything else is all yeah. part of unraveling that story. Nice. But, uh, you know, I think I think fans will really love it. And what do you want um, both fans of the game and the guys that are into the tech side of it in terms of the DLC, in terms of uh, the, the, the art and the, and the graphics, what do you want these two different groups to come away with? Because you're seeing that mix here at, at Comic-Con, and it's pretty interesting how you're a designer, but you're doing marketing, promoting, and you're hands-on. And how are you converging that world? Well, so, I have to correct, I'm actually not a designer. Okay, uh, I'm, a I'm studio. sorry. I'm the, no, it's all right. No, no, I, I know what, calling me a designer is a huge compliment. I'll tell you right now, <laughs> I'd love to be called it. I'd love to go along with it. But our designers are way more talented than I can ever be. Okay. Uh, I'm actually the studio vice president. Nice. And I was the head of technology as well before that. So that's why I'm a bit more involved on the wow. tech side. Okay. But I've also got a real chance to work with all the leadership and all the great designers. Yeah. You know, we have a, a new art director. We have a new design lead on this. New producers. I mean, we have a new leadership crew that put wow. this all, all together. Well, what made you do that? I mean, I, I, usually... Most company studios are scared to like break up a team when it works with something. What made you say, okay, you know, we need fresh blood in here. We need a new perspective. What made you do that? Yeah. When you could have you stuck know, with what worked. You know, some of that comes from attrition, some people leaving, for example. But a lot of it really came from just the initiative of people that were sitting on the team saying, I have a vision and yeah. I can do this. That's hot. Right? And that's, that's hot. really what it comes down to. I mean, we have been very fortunate to promote a lot of people from within. They're the ones who stick their hand up every day and say, I will do this. That's great. And prove us that they can. And I think in this game, they've really knocked it out of the park. And so far, every time I've come by this booth, I've seen a lot of people play the game, and they're literally getting into it. I'm dying to get my hands on it, and so is my intern here. And I'm, and I'm wondering, has has the, the response to the game been what you wanted, especially from an executive level? Oh, yeah. You know, it's, it's been phenomenal. Yeah. Because I'm so close to the game, and yeah. a big part of my job is looking at areas that may not be working, right? Yeah. Coming to something like this in New York and seeing the reactions, you know, they just, they blow me away. Really? You know, Because you've had a smile. Every time I've seen you, you can be exhausted, but you have a smile on your face and it doesn't look, it doesn't show at all. No, you know what? I don't think the smile will ever get wiped <laughs> off my face, I'll tell you now, because the reaction has been phenomenal. Of course, yeah. you know, when I look at things, I'm used to looking at it very critically. Yeah. And that's certainly, to answer one of your questions before, what I hope is people that know the industry, the professionals, look at the game with a critical eye and see how great it is, like see the great moments in the game. And of course, for the fans, as they come up and look at it now, I'm, I'm blown away by how they just love it. And yeah. we're just showing a couple of things right now. And it's, and, you know, and it's I mean, that's what I was I was so curious about as well. It's like there's a there's a vibrant energy around this title. Um, you hoping it when does it come out? So it comes out on April twenty fourth next year. Okay, nice, nice. And it's on the three sixty PS three and the PC. Okay, and what else is there any other information that we should know about besides the release time? Or, or will there be any new uh, uh, reveals between now and then? Yeah, I mean one of the new reveals we had at Comic Con because like, besides the hands on, yeah. it was part two of the CG trailer. Wow. And so the CG trailer kind of continues telling the story of Heller's mission, his objective. Okay. But it also does hint at things to come in the game in terms of abilities. That's hot. So you know, definitely take a look and check that out. You know, we will be announcing more and more things when we get closer to the end date. Okay. We got six months, but stay tuned. Every month we intend on showcasing something new. Well, thank you very much for your time, and I know you have a lot of things to do. I really appreciate it, and this is Elijah with the Kingslayer.com, and we're signing.